Good morning, everyone. That was not a very loud good morning back, but I'm assuming it's a Saturday. So thank you firstly to everyone for coming out today. It's a nice packed room. Uh, we do know it's a Saturday, so thanks for that. Um, to begin with, I just want to give you a little bit of background. This is the 17th Dasra Philanthropy Forum. Uh, it's been a long 20-year journey. We'll show you a short video at the end of this, but that is quite remarkable to think about the journey of philanthropy in India with Dasra, along with all the partners, some of who have been in the room and working with us for a long time. This is the first one in Gujarat, though, the first one we're having in Ahmedabad, so that is very exciting for us. Uh, my name is Krishnan. I work at Dasra. I work in one of our fields in sanitation. Um, we have had a lot of these gatherings in cities from Bombay to Houston to London to San Francisco. And this is the first in a series that we're going to start initiating over these years. So we will keep coming back to Gujarat. It's not a one-off and thank you very much. It's an actual longer engagement. So that's what's exciting. If you look at the entire agenda, we have a wonderfully packed day. Um, in terms of the kind of people we've had participate and we've been privileged at Dasra to have with us, we're, it's quite diverse. We've had from foundations, family foundations, from the Nilkanis to the Azim Premji Philanthropic Initiative, um, to the Warren Buffetts, to the Kotaris, and the Godridges. They've all been on this journey, just like a lot of the philanthropists in the room today, for a reason. And the reason is to actually try to make an impact in the work we do. And the work we do is in service of others, and that's always important to keep at the center of what we're trying to do today. It is really not about us, it is really about what we're trying to do for the society at large. Um, so what the theme of today is, it's, there's no ask, this is not a fundraiser. What this is is an actual start to an education journey for everyone in the room. Better understanding of what the work is that's being done by some incredible people in the room. A lot of you probably know each other as well, which is always a good thing. Uh, we don't have to start from there, but you'll also get different and diverse voices, which is very, very critical. Um, again, I cannot emphasize how important it is for everyone in the room to interact. Please ask questions. This is not a sort of a passive static event. It never can be, uh, primarily because we have NGOs in the room and philanthropists in the room, both of whom can work together to actually bring about the change we're hoping to have in mind over the next 10 to 20 years in this journey for us. Uh, of course, we do want to thank a lot of the people who made this possible. Um, from the setting you see here, a beautiful auditorium, a lovely hotel. Thank you so much for all of the opportunity for us. Uh, you will see a lot of the other partners being listed um, over the board. They've always been supportive of Dustra, uh, and that's very important for us um, to recognize it as well. Uh, since we're running a little bit late, I will just repeat two things. One is please, please keep in mind that whatever you're learning today is supposed to inform you for something that is much more deeper. So if you do want more information from anyone, from the panelists or from the NGOs, please reach out. Dasra is always there. We have a lot of Dasra staff here to help you with that. Um, and the second is try to be more interactive. So if you can sit in the front, try not to sit in the back. This isn't school, so this should be much easier for us to manage. Um, and with that, rather than me talking on, I'm uh, we're going to show you a video of the journey of Dasra over the last 20 years. And of course, Devil, the co-founder um, for the last 20 years of Dasra, will take the stage and start the day's proceeding. Thank you. Just in terms of sheer scale of challenge, we're talking about 400 million young people in the next 10 years who will be under or unemployed. When I started, I just knew the impact that I wanted to create, but I really had to learn everything from scratch. I had no contacts in the sector um, and of course I understood even little less about health and nutrition. I realized that more impactful philanthropy would not come out of just money. When we started, the issue of fecal sludge was not even talked about. To be able to achieve our audacious goal of touching the lives of a billion people clearly isn't going to be done by Dasra alone. And that's really why we've situated ourselves in a place that requires us to work with others, to invite others to be part of this journey. So I think our origins were very home-based. We would all cook together and eat together and work together. Dasra's contribution equally has been to provide high quality talent to the sector. Uh, what is very nice to see is that this talent is not just people from the social sector, but they are people from the private sector as well, 
people from educational institutions. 20 years ago, there were two of us, and now, you know, if you see this space, we're uh, about 110 people all together in one place. We've moved into multiple offices, and, and as we did so, we were very keen in, in having other NGOs, other partners, other funders even sit with us to, to share office space with us. We literally had a garage, we cut it in half, put a floor on it, and Magic Bus was downstairs. And dust were upstairs. <laughs> When we started working with these NGO leaders, we realized while they were phenomenal in terms of understanding the community and creating interventions that made impact on the ground, what they didn't necessarily have support in is developing themselves, looking at management teams, looking at structures, thinking about creating impact at scale. And that's where we realized that's where our core talent could actually come in to make a difference. And so Dusra evolved into being more of a bridging organization. And we felt that if you supported the NGO with both kind of funding and capacity building, then these NGOs would really be able to scale. I think in many ways, attending the, the Dasra Leadership Program helped me to understand the application of business principles to the social sector, and of course, form a network of very trusted friends who even today are my go-to people whenever I need anything. I mean, initially my dream had been to get to 5,000 schools, right, in the worst rural remote areas. Um, even though I had the vision, I didn't really know the pathway to get to that scale. And I think that's why Dasra was uh, a huge help because it helped me to build that structure that helped you get from a 500 school to a 5,000 school. I remember Neera would come into my office one day every week to help me build a five-year budget and a kind of a financial model, which I didn't know how to do. We were trying to build something that we knew would be robust enough to be able to scale into multiple environments. So, you know, the idea was that we wouldn't just uh, continue doing ad hoc programming, but we would develop a curriculum and IP. So that was the first thing for five years, working with Dasra really right on our side. Dasra has been the backbone uh, for setting up this collaboration network. We've gotten a policy for fecal sludge management, which is the first ever policy any country has uh, launched in the world. Uh, and it's all been a part of the whole collaborative platform that we set up. We were one of the uh, winners of the Dasra Giving Circle Award for to fund our work on child health and nutrition. This was going to be the largest urban malnutrition program in the country and certainly a very, very large program for Sneha to implement. Having Dasra as a partner has been one of the best things for Sneha through this entire process. They were with us for every monthly review meeting. They helped us recruit staff. They helped us identify critical resources, a monitoring evaluation specialist and IT specialist, which made such a significant difference to the rollout of our programs. Dasra has played a truly phenomenal role in the development of philanthropy in India. On an annual basis, uh, Dasra works with 90 HNIs and philanthropists who donate over 120 crores each year. Now that is no mean achievement. When I started my foray in philanthropy, before that I was largely giving money on emotional grounds or people I knew. And it used to be only money. But after I met Dasra, they had a, what is known as a giving circle. And in the giving circle, they brought forth an NGO. And they helped in selecting that NGO because it was technology based, which is my past experience and which I felt also was an NGO which was highly scalable. Over the years, while we've been always at the forefront of providing capacity building support in building stronger institutions, we realized a few institutions alone couldn't solve the problem. I feel the world has to move towards collaboration. I think Dasra has a, such a unique opportunity really to play the role of the convener of those collaborations. And I think the most important skill uh, that we got from the team at Dasra was their ability to build relationships. Everyone is an expert in our field and getting experts to collaborate is one of the hardest jobs. So I'm really excited about the next uh, 20 years. Uh, the last 20 years have been slow and steady and I think it's taken us, us some time to figure out really what is Dasra about and where can we really make a difference. We think there's a lot that can happen in India that is actually now being translated in the global development sector. 
uh, the big need in the nonprofit sector is to have many, many, many more nonprofits that are at scale, are high impact and cost effective, right? And we're not going to be able to get there without organizations like DASRA. I think the big agenda ahead is also to channel adequate funding into the relatively ignored areas, but which are very vital for our country and for our society. It is extremely important for India's transformation and to really move the needle globally on the sustainable development goals means India's got to move its goals. And so placing that at the forefront and really rallying stakeholders around that is what we really see collaborative action about. Thank you all for coming today. Um, it's it, very, very exciting for us after 20 years to do the first philanthropy forum event here in Ahmedabad. While this is the first time we're doing a gathering like this in Gujarat, uh, we've actually been very close to Gujarat for, from the beginning. I myself, uh, one of the co-founders of Dasra, am Gujarati. Um, I also um, realized very early on that a lot of the innovations, a lot of the great impactful organizations, a lot of the issues that are faced across the country, the solutions, many of them actually exist here in this state. And that is why while it's taken us 19 years to come here, uh, it was in the year 2000 that we actually went to IM Amdavad, met a gentleman by the name of Vineet Rai, and decided how do we take an organization that he was running, Gyan Gujarat, uh, across the country. In 2001, unfortunately, uh, given our connection to this state, we also came back after the earthquake uh, and went around helping communities that needed support um, across different ethnicities, different groups, ensuring that support was equally given and distributed. In 2005, we were fortunate to work with Bal Seva. This is the organization that you guys must know that Ila Bhatt has started, but Bal Seva actually looks after the children of the SEVA members, enabling them to have a safe space while their mothers are working and providing healthcare as well as education. In 2009, we worked with Sabras and Vikas and the salt pan workers in Buj. Since then, we've worked with Manav Sadna, we've worked with MHT, we've worked with SEPT, we've worked with over 20 NGOs in this state, helping them think about their issues, helping them scale their programs, helping them grow not only in this state, but outside of the state, and more importantly, some of the groups like we'll hear today have actually grown outside of the country. And really, that's what DASRA is about. We're an NGO for NGOs. We realized very early on that we have amazing leaders in our country that are really putting themselves at risk at times to solve some of the most critical issues. Yet, as funders, as donors, as individuals, we never really support these same NGO leaders to grow their programs, to ask them what their issues are, to figure out why they need five more computers so they can help more individuals in this space. And that's really what DASRA came about. My wife, Nira, and I were in awe of these NGO leaders, and we thought we wanted to serve them. We wanted to do seva to them like they've been providing seva to the many communities that they serve, not just in this state, but across the country overall. And in doing this seva, and in working with these NGOs, we realized that there were ways of them to actually not just impact 100 or 1,000 or even 10,000 lives, but there were ways for them to actually impact millions of lives across the country. And in that sense, given that both of us came from a business background, we realized it was actually basic skills like strategic planning, <laughs> talent, HR, finance, 
the same skills that are required to run and establish leading businesses of our country, many of those skills can actually be transferred to the NGO sector to help these organizations grow and scale. And that's really what DASRA has been doing for the past 20 years. And it's very exciting for us to now have that form, this form, excuse me, here in Ahmedabad. To give you a sense, as Christian was saying, this is the 17th form we've done. We've had these in London, in Houston, in San Francisco, in Mumbai, in Bangalore. Um, and, and what comes out of these gatherings are relationships. Vanessa D'Souza from SNEA spoke on the video, trusted network of change makers that are coming together to solve some of India's most wicked problems realizing that we need different skills, different perspectives, and different forms of funding. And that's really what Dasra is about. And so Safina Hussein, who also spoke on the video, to give you a sense, since we launched these forums, and this is the 17th one, we've realized that in bringing people together, we can actually help in solving some of these issues. Educate Girls and Safina spoke at our very first conference when she was working in 500 schools in Rajasthan. Today, she has plans with UNICEF, with the government of India, and with a $30 million grant from Audacious to actually scale across the country and impact millions of lives. And that's what we've seen, is if you give the same care and support to our NGO leaders as we give to our for-profit entrepreneurs, chances are they could actually scale, grow, and create impact like we've never seen before. And so through these gatherings, we've been successful in deploying over 450 crores worth of funding to help stop child marriage in Jharkhand, to help increase childcare for working women, to ensure that toilets are not just installed, but more importantly, the treatment of what goes into that toilet is critical to ensure that fecal does not enter our water supply. That matter that enters our water supply, unfortunately, leads to 1,600 children dying every single day. And it's a coalition, coalition of over 60 NGO partners that we have come with, along with the Gates Foundation, to actually pass national level and state level policies to ensure that this stops in its tracks. So this is the kind of impact that we've been able to create, not on our own, not with the 110 member team, but with all of you guys. And with that, we just want to say thank you for not just coming today, but as Krishnan said earlier, for joining us on this journey to really improve India from the ground up, from partnering with the NGO leaders, with the givers, with the corporates, and bringing all of the tools we have to increase the profitability and the GDP, but looking at those that have been unaffected, unfortunately, by the growth of our country, and ensuring that we also spend as much time, effort, and passion to transform India, where a billion thrive with dignity and equity. We could not do this event if it wasn't for the kind support of GMSP. We also could not do this event if it wasn't for the phenomenal staff of this hotel. This entire gathering is funded and sponsored. We're not paying a rupee for this, and the team has worked tirelessly to actually get this off the ground, staying up all night with our team to ensure the stage is set up, the tables are fine, water bottles, not plastic, but glass are being used, so we're being environmentally friendly. Every sort of step of this process has been the Crown Plaza, and we really appreciate their time. And then most importantly, MHT has been a critical, critical partner in our journey uh, from this and have provided us tremendous support, doing over 40 meetings with us to ensure that we have the right individuals in the room and that we actually have an evening full of impact. With that, I'm going to introduce two videos that are coming up. One from Murari Bapu, uh, who's a spiritual leader who's very well known in the state and someone who is actually well known to the Sachdev family. And then second will be a video on GMSP. And then we'll have them actually talk a little bit about their journey and why they feel today is critical. Thank you. Prakruti no Liam. भणेला ने अभण लगभग बदा ने खबर छे समुद्र ने अंदर जेटली जल राशि होई छे इतली क्या ही नथी होई परंतु ए पाणी जिम कहवाई छे के एमा रत्नो छे 
समुद्र पौराणिक वर्णों में जुदा जुदा दूध नो समुद्र फलाणा नो समुद्र छोड़ो परंतु समुद्र पानी मे वराल ने लीधे जो वादल ऊंचे चढ़े कोई घर वस्तु लाइने चढ़ो कशु घूमश में चढ़ू पर समय थाय वो ज्या मीठा पानी की जरूरत है त्या वरसी जाए रण में वरसे खेतरो में वरसे समुद्र दसरा सेवा भावी संस्था विषय जो मैंने जानकारी प्राप्त थी तन्मय भाई द्वारा पेला मैं रमेश भाई सचदेव आगत आप संस्था जमनी पास बहु समी क्षमता है एवं बदा संपन्न लोग कई ले अथवा तो ये जम समुद्र वदला ऊंचे जाए एम आ संस्था समृद्ध दाताओ समझदार दाताओ कंस्था बहुत ऊंची गति कर रही है परंतु ऊंचे चढ़ाया पी जो वर्षे नही तो ये संस्था हो वदड़ू होनी कोई किमत नहीं वरसव जो ज्या वरसाद जरूर है त्या वे वरसव जो पी जे लीधु समझदार संपन्न लोग सागर जेवा हे एनी थी जे दान आए लाइ ने संस्था गौरव वारी चढ़ी जगत में ज्या ज्या जरूरत हो वरसाद करे जरूर त्या आपो अ जरूर त्या आपो अ जरूर त्या आपो वादला ने खबर नहीं कि क्या वरसव तो घनी खोटी जगह वरसी जाए तरण में वरसी जाए समुद्र में वरसी जाए तरह कोई अर्थ नहीं कदाच आ संस्था ने वादला करता समझ अभ्यास करे सर्वे करे समाज में दुनिया में क्या क्या वरसवा जरूर है यहाँ जे संस्थाओं ने जे समृद्ध लोग ने आपे जगह अँपरवा जवे अ सेवा करवा जेवी है अँ ते कई कर सको आंगली चिंधवा पुण्य करे जेम नदी परोपकार वहे वृक्ष परोपकार फल आपे सूर्य परोपकार तपे वायु आपने बदा जीवता राखवा वहे वादाओ अपना वरसे एम दसरा संस्था पी कार्य मैंने जानी आगली मीटिंग सप्टेम्बर में अमदावाद खाते क्राउन प्लाजा होटेल अरे रमेश भाई होटेल त्याण आप आप सब बदा त्या रोकाओ त्रन दिवस बातचीत टॉक करो एक बीजा विचार विनिमय करो समय अभाव आदर्शी मेरी व्यस्तता एने लीधे हूँ ये समय में कदाच त्या हाजर न रही सकूँ मार प्रोग्राम ने लीधे 
વૈજ્ઞાનિક સાધનોનો સદુપયોગ કરીને એડવાન્સમાં આપની બધી સદપ્રવૃત્તિ માટે મારી પ્રસન્નતા વ્યક્ત કરું છું મારી શુભકામના પાઠ આપણે ત્યાં એક સૂત્ર છે એ સૂત્રને ગુરુ કૃપાથી ગુરુએ આપેલી સમજથી મેં થોડો ફેરફાર કર્યો છે એ સૂત્ર સારું જ છે કે માણસે બહુજન સુખાય બહુજન હિતાય સેવા કરવી જોઈએ ઘણા લોકોના હિત માટે ઘણા લોકોના સુખ માટે કરવું જોઈએ પણ ત્યાં આ સૂત્ર પ્રમાણે આપણે થોડાક નાના થઈ જઈએ જનનો અર્થ જો માણસ જ થાય જન સમુદાય જન સંસદ જન સમૂહ જન સભા એમાં માણસો જ આપણા લક્ષ્યમાં હોય છે આપણે કેવલ માણસોના સુખ માટે અને માણસોના હિત માટે જ બધું કરવાનું આપણી પાસે પાંચ વસ્તુ છે પૃથ્વી આકાશ વાયુ અગ્નિ અને જળ એને આપણે ભૂત કહીએ છીએ મને એમ લાગે છે એકવીસમી સદીમાં બહુજન સુખાય અને બહુજન હિતાય એ સૂત્રને રાખવાનું જ પણ હવે થોડોક ફેર કરવો જોઈએ કે બહુ સર્વભૂત હિતાય આજે પર્યાવરણ બગડી રહ્યું છે આજે પૃથ્વીનું ખનન એનો રસકસ ઉડી ગયો છે આજે જળની સમસ્યા છે આજે વાયુ પ્રદૂષિત છે આજે આકાશ ચીસ પાડે છે એટલો બધો કચરો આપણે એમાં ઉછાળીએ છીએ એવા સમયે આપણું હવે પછીનું પગલું એવું પણ હોવું જોઈએ કે મારી પ્રવૃત્તિ એવી વિસ્તરશે બહુજન થી લઈને સર્વભૂત હિતાય સર્વભૂત સુખાય પણ બીજાના સુખ માટે બીજાના હિત માટે આપણે દેખા દેખી થી ઘણી વખત કરતા હોય છે કે ભાઈ આટલું કરીએ તો એનું એને સુખ થશે બીજા એમ કે છે કે તમે એને સુખ આપો આટલું કરીએ તો બીજાનું હિત થશે ને બીજા કહે છે કે આ તો પરોપકારી છે પણ આ બધી જ પ્રવૃત્તિમાં એક ત્રીજું શું સર્વભૂત પ્રીતાય મને આ બધાની સાથે પ્રેમ છે એટલા માટે હું કરું અને જયારે કોઈના માટે પ્રેમ હોય છે ત્યારે માણસ પાછું વળીને જોતો નથી એક માં ને બાળક ઉપર પ્રેમ છે એટલે એમાં કોઈ દિવસ પાછું વળીને જોતી નથી એમ દસરા સંસ્થા જે આ સદપ્રવૃત્તિ કરે છે એટલે સર્વભૂત હિતાય સર્વભૂત સુખાય સર્વભૂત પ્રીતાય આ સંસ્થાની જે જે સદપ્રવૃત્તિ હોય એમાં તલગાજરડાની કાયમ પ્રસન્નતા કાયમ શુભકામના અને ખૂબ ખૂબ અભિનંદન સાથે જય શ્રી believe women and girls are at the heart of society and investing in them is crucial to empowering the family and the community we know that individual that are economically empowered and financially sound and independent are much more resilient and less vulnerable in the society we need more men standing up for women violence against women is very much a global issue we need to invest in changing mindsets if you are really going to make a difference installation of toilet has really multiple benefits of promoting health safety and dignity we found 15% increase in girls going to school and 35% increase in family income after the installation of eco sanitation toilets taking the time to invest in children at a very young age is important in changing attitudes
Good morning. When I was younger, I was known as Little Miss Chatterbox. My twin sister and I would hold hands and we would chit chat all day long. Now, looking back, I imagine this was delightful and annoying in equal measure, but my mother is here today, so she'll be able to fill you in on the real story. My father, her partner in life and in philanthropy, used to say to us chatterbox children, are you a talker or are you a doer? And as we kick off our conference today, it is this single question that continues to echo in my mind. Of course, we must have dialogue, discussion, and debate, but I hope that by the end of the day, together we will be able to take a step towards real, meaningful action. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes telling you a little bit about our family foundation, God My Silent Partner, or GMSP Foundation, which was founded in 2006 by my parents, Pratibha and Ramesh Sajdev. Our philanthropic journey started off as many family foundations do. We made grants to good organizations that were doing good work for a number of good causes. But good is not always good enough. We wanted to make a greater impact with our investments, or to put it another way, we wanted our philanthropy to more closely reflect the strategic approach that we'd always taken to our business. And so today we combine evidence and insight from the field with a strong set of principles and values to direct our funding. And that funding, which is always flexible, supports strong frontline organizations like those that are in this room and the ones that we saw earlier on the video that is, have a proven track record of supporting vulnerable people here in India and in the UK. We believe that it's local organizations that are best placed to identify and respond to the needs of those in their communities. But too often, the funding that they receive is impatient, it's inflexible, and the decisions that are made are made by those that are away, are away from the grassroots and the front line. And so we advocate for a different model, one where our philanthropy be as bold and as thoughtful as we expect our partners to be. That's why we always offer flexible gap funding so that the grassroots can direct unrestricted resources where they see the need to be the greatest. And we believe that this approach can help strong frontline organizations to grow, to innovate, and most importantly, to deliver transformative change at the grassroots. And that's why we're not issue specific. We fund across a broad range of topics because context matters and because of our belief in universal equality and shared humanity, which is really the bedrock of our foundation, that regardless of ethnicity, gender, income, sexual orientation, fundamentally, we're all the same and we all have a responsibility to help one another. So in this way, we've tried to combine our entrepreneurial heritage with our family values to create the roadmap that guides GMSP today. And it is this mix of evidence and empathy, of listening and respect, that we believe leads to longer, more meaningful relationships with our partners and ultimately greater impact on the ground. Of course, there is no such thing as silver bullet philanthropy. I wish there was. But we know that we don't know all the answers, and we know that there's still so much work to be done. Countless hours and money have been poured into this sector already, and yet still we see shameful inequality. We see people living in slavery. We see people facing unspeakable violence, and people that are unhappy and alone. It is not enough to simply continue with the approaches that we have taken so far. So in the next few hours, as we hear many words, some of them over and over again, words like collaboration, impact, scale, let us ask ourselves, what do these words really demand of us? What does a word like collaboration really mean? Is it about joining hands with commitment and humility? I think so. What is impact if it is not deep and lasting? 
and scale. The enormity of the problems that we face require each and every one of us to lay, raise the level of our ambition even further. This conference, every one of us in this room has a responsibility today to do more than collect a few new business cards. We must meet this moment. We must live these words in their truest sense. Beyond words, beyond discussion, we must now commit to action. That's why GMSP is very proud to be supporting 10 to 19 Dasra's Adolescent Collaborative by bringing together some of the country's strongest and most courageous NGOs, funders, technical experts, and policymakers in the spirit of true collaboration, we know that we can meaningfully impact the lives of millions of adolescents in India at a scale that we could never have achieved alone. We can do more when we do more together. So I'd like to conclude now with that simple challenge that my father gave me all those years ago, a question to each of us whose answer is now more important than ever. Are you a talker or are you a doer?